Hello YouTubers, welcome to vlog number 127. Today the sun is not out straight away but I assume that'll just burn off and be a hot day as per usual on this week anyway. It is a Wednesday so it means less training today, or at least that's what I think. No weights today, just recovering from yesterday's little sort of maximal efforts or close to them. Quite happy with those and then just some steady rowings this morning. We're going to pick up Fraser, we're going to pick up Ollie, and then we're going to head to Dorney once again. Let's get going. And that's us finished the sessions for today but you won't know that yet because this is just after we got out of the car and the video because Fraser has to tell us something so basically I messed up I tried to shoot some sweet slow-mo footage for Cam this morning in the car and I may have left his camera in slow motion so all everything he's filmed since then has been in slow-mo <laughs> with no sound so he can't use any of it and I've ruined the day's vlog I'm sorry but it's not ruined because I'm just going to talk over the slow-mo <laughs> we'll see how that goes that's yeah, variation because remember variation can be a key to motivation did I, did I say that right? Uh, yeah for sure it sounded like a variation can be a key to motivation Albert Einstein yeah buddy and we've made it to Dorney Lake on a wonderful day. All oh, the lads are here. Here is Will Geffen. Oh, yeah, super to Brooklyn. Uh, Jack, yes, doing well today. How are we feeling? Oh, yes, morning. Oh, mate, I'm beached, mate, bro. Oh, uh, Fraser, how Yes, I agree. Very, oh, yes. I am also beached, yes. And the sun is still grey, or the sun is still not out, but hopefully it will burn away today. How are you feeling, Vass? Ready to go for the day? Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Ready to go on for the session today. Ready to have a great day on the water. But wait. What are those? Oh my goodness me. Socks and sandals. All right, let's get in the water. Okay, and welcome back to Eric Thoughts with Cam Buck. And we've got some other lads. Please introduce yourself, lads. Hi, I'm back at Bosden Bay. <laughs> We're making funny ones. Yeah, boys, you got to give me right. inside of this. No, it's, 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 oh, I'm Sam Horsley. I'm Timbo Slicey. And I'm Will Geffen. I'm Vasilis Ragusis. And we've got all the lads, and today, as you can tell from the title, we're going to talk about being in the pain cave and what you might do in said pain cave, how it feels, why you want to be there, how it looks, etc. So we'll start with Barsden Bay, back Barsden Bay. No, somewhere else can go first. We'll start with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so be being in the pain cave. <laughs> Is is a dangerous place to be, but it's also very exciting. Usually, it's, it's somewhere you go when you're reaching your limits and finding new ones. When you're with the lads in an eight like we're in at the moment, it's all a matter of being bros together, finding each other's head torches, turning them all on, and then finding new levels. And how I may deal with said being in the pain cave is, like I've spoken about before, is dividing into small manageable chunks whether that be 250 to 250, or just trying to listen to the coxswain given smaller chunks of the course. If she's saying, going through the K, then that's just a K left. It's only a thousand meters. That's quick maths right there. All right, let's go on to Tim Clark. What do you feel like the pain cave is like? Um, so obviously it's fun, but also not great. But I have my one simple strategy, which is to uh, count strokes. So on a 2K, I do like 10 hard strokes off the start and then I go in minutes. So I just go into rate 32 and count 32 strokes till I get to the last 500 and then just go crazy and do what I want. And in a boat, I count strokes as well. So I, I will count strokes the whole way through the race. And then as it goes towards the end, I just count less and less strokes to the point where if I'm blowing, I might count 
two strokes at a time or one stroke <laughs> at a time. Um, so that's how I do it. Because then you're just thinking about counting, you're not thinking about how how much it hurts. There you go. How many strokes have you ever gotten to in a race? What's the highest number? 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a high number. Okay, now we're going to Jack. Jack, pain cave. Um, okay, so the pain cave is basically just like this really horrible place, right? And everyone just like tries to find you like you know it's gonna come and I think the the like the only thing you try and do is like see how you'll deal with it when the pain actually comes. So for me, I just like break it up into chunks, a bit like Tim, but like I think it's like more like thirty seconds and I just think about like one stroke at a time in those thirty seconds, just like normally in the boat I'm like thinking about like technical things like legs down hard, like draw the like draw it through, like whatever. Like that kind of thing and then i do it a stroke at a time and then suddenly you're like 1k down you're like oh okay like that wasn't too bad i just have like a k to go and then just keep doing that and then finally it's like over and like if you just break it up into small manageable chunks then it becomes a lot easier i reckon sam what do you think uh i reckon that <clears throat> excuse me um when you're really hurting you, you just remember that yeah you know whoever's beside you or hopefully behind you is also hurting they're hurting as well, probably just as much, maybe a bit more. I don't know. If you're me, definitely hurting a bit less, but you know, keep it positive. <laughs> All right, and let's, we've got two of the Oxford lads left. Let's start with the Geff. Yeah, so I think it's, it's tactics for dealing with uh, the pain cave is a bit different depending on what situation you're in. You know, if you're in a you're in a 2K, you're in the last three, 400 meters, you know you know how long it's going to take you know how many strokes you need and it doesn't really matter what happens to your technique you just got to get those numbers down you just got yeah you just got to get all the energy down if you get a half slide doesn't matter as long as the numbers are better you know but you're in a race you're in an eight you know there are seven other guys yamming you don't want to become selfish and just go to half slide so you've got to have you've got to have a bit of a sort of zen to you got to you got to keep the length you got to keep the focus on the technical stuff while also absolutely bending all your energy in the pain cave and that's difficult and i think a lot of you guys said you know you've got to focus on the fact that there are other people with you that are there are other people that you're racing against they're in the same situation you know they're feeling it too you just got to do a better job than them i think if you've got your crew side by side you, you feel that sort of blood boiling and you just want to beat them i think if you if you focus on sort of attacking someone else taking them out rather than sort of just focusing on your own suffering i think that's a much more positive way to deal with the pain cave but it's tricky you know, everyone has their own tactics you know counting strokes is an important thing uh certainly here's a plug for oxford here we go in the boat race you know because you uh <clears throat> because you have to try and get ahead as early as possible you you end up in that red line in that pain cave very early on and then you're just pat counting strokes and you know there's stories about guys who are about 2k into what is effectively a 6k race just counting pairs of strokes just one two one two all the way home that's a pretty grim place to be but you just gotta just gotta make it work yeah so yeah. that's what i've got to say about that really what about you vasilis <clears throat> vasilis hello um yeah i think mental preparation i think they're kind of um what you do before the race could also help that a little bit um, in terms of kind of maybe some visualization techniques, uh, you know, really thinking about how you're going to act in certain situations. Uh, I know in particular the bow race, this is like, you know, it's a 6.8k race and, you know, you're definitely going to be at pain, in pain for a large majority of that race, just like in a 2k. Um, so kind of thinking about, you know, being ready for it you know, really mentally preparing for this and taking the time and the lead up to the race to kind of think about um, how you're going to row and, you know, how it's going to hurt and how you're going to be ready for it and how you're going to be able to push through that. That can be really good. Um, and also, it, it, I think in particular, the stroke seat where I've raced a bit in, uh, a lot of it is, again, this trust that a lot of the guys kind of mentioned before me now is that kind of just trusting the guys behind you to, that they're, they're with you there because, you know, all you can see sometimes is either you know, nothingness in front of you or the opposition, you know, coming back at you or, you know, kind of staying with you. So I think knowing that you have the, you know, seven guys 
behind you and around you just you know pushing really hard you know kind of nine as one eight as one and um yeah so good luck to everyone racing at henley yeah. with that <laughs> and just one last thing about being in the pain cave like vas was saying about mental prep you can only really deal with something very well if you've done it before. So the more you can get in the pain cave, dig a hole, make a campfire, get the flashlights out, have a little bit of food, because remember, food is fuel, the better you're going to deal with it in other times. When the stress levels are high and you're trying to just, all you try to do is yam on it and count to two. But like Vass is saying, good luck to everyone racing in Henley. Hopefully your pain cave adventures are great and fruitful. See you after we finish this workout. And that's us off the water. What a great session. Woo! And now we've got some awesome music bumping. And now just to get changed, get ready for going to the shop to get some food. Because remember, food is fuel. Vast, what are we going to get today? Oh yes, Rupert and Bukati. Going to get some meal deals, you know. Maybe some sandwich. <laughs> Alright, remember, food is fuel. Let's get to the shop. And we've made it into the shop. Everyone's got their selection of lunches. Let's see. Let's have a look what everyone's got. Jack, what have you got there? I've got crisps and a sandwich. Hmm. Ollie, what you got? Oh, yeah. I, I'm peach, mate. Oh. Well, yep, banana. And I've got yogurt, tuna, sweet corn, pasta salad, and some donuts. Oh, yeah. That's really my favorite, favorite type of yogurt. Russian fudge. Let me know the your favourite flavour you're in the comments below. You right, Vass, what'd you get? Oh, I've got some selection of deli meats. Uh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Little sandwich and extra large blueberries. Mmm. Wowie. And we're back at Dorney Lake. We've got all the food fueled up. Oh, yeah. All the guys now over here in Jack's car piling out. Oh, yes, I'm very stuck. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Yes, I'll get out. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm athletic. Yes, yes. Oh, look at the back of this. I can definitely get in here. Oh, give me some help. Give me some help, boys. Oh, yes, yes. Watch my feet. Watch my feet and sandals. I do not have socks on no more. Yes, I'm definitely getting in. Mm. Yes. Okay. And while Vass spends his time in the boot, let's get to the water session. And that's us finished the sessions for today, heading back to the club for some food, for some recovery, because remember, food is fuel, hashtag fifth. Let's get to it. And we've made it to the club. The traffic was horrendous, so it took about an hour to get back from Dorney Lake. <sighs> ah, well, the weather is great. The sun is out, we've got blue skies, and now it's time to fuel up, because remember, food is fuel. Let's get to it. And we've made it to the crew room. We've been given some wonderful sunglasses from Frost, Borneo and Henley. What do you think? Oh, yeah. And remember, food is fuel, so we have the food. Delicious. Sort of like bolognese, penny and stuff. How are we doing, Frank? Good, man. Yeah, and Jack. How are we doing? Hi, Mum. Miss you very much. Good to see you. Where is your mum? In Oxford. <laughs> Don't you see her every day? 
it's a, it's a tough day without her. It's, it's a tough morning all the time not seeing her and then I get to see her in the afternoon which is very nice. Such distance. Such distance, such an opportunity to give a hug to your mum. Hi to all the mums out there, see you after lunch. And we've made it outside the club after a wonderful lunch. There was some tasty bolognese type meat, that was absolutely delicious. But that is it for the rest of the vlog for today and Henley is getting very close. We've got our bracelets, hopefully that's in focus at some point. I'm going to have a look. So that gets members of Leander who are racing into Leander Club during Henley Royal Regatta without wearing a shirt and tie, jacket, etc. So you get to be a little bit more relaxed while you're at the racing time. So that's really, really good. But this bracelet signifies Henley's coming up real fast. Normally for last year when we were racing the World Cups or I was racing at the World Cups, so it was different. We stayed away from Henley for a while and then, because we were training at Cavisham and then came to Henley maybe a few days before the actual racing at the regatta. But now, obviously you've, you guys have been with me. We've went through the, the boat tents and you've seen sort of everything get built over time. Speaking of which, I'll probably, once, once everyone's at the regatta, I'll have a little walk around when I'm walking around anyway. See if I can chat to you guys if you're there and I'll show you the full boat tents, but that'll be next week at some point. Making sure I'm staying away from anywhere I shouldn't be, but still showing you what it's all about. And I'll have my competitors pass and all that, so I'll be able to walk around. But, and also another prep for Henley Raw Regatta. You gotta look good, because remember, look good, feel good, real good. So I've got another suit on the way that has, a, or another suit has arrived but I ha can't show you that just now. I have to get it all sorted and actually I have to get a couple of suits lengthened. Uh, anyway, but that is it for the vlog for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed the chat on the pain cave too and apologies for the talk over the slow-mo or it probably isn't looking going to be slow-mo for you guys but me talking over footage because uh, I didn't check after Fraser did some awesome slow-mo footage getting to Dornan this morning. Ah well. But that is it for the vlog for today. Remember, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and have a good one.